Late in April of 2011, three old friends met at Port Brewery and the Lost Abbey to revive a piece of history. Macanudo Porter, one of the first San Diego beers to win a gold medal at the Great American Beer Festival. It had been more than a decade since the trio, Troy Hoyel, Skip Virgilio, and Tommy Arthur brewed together. And while the men in the beer they were to make were the same, the circumstances were much different. On this day, Troy and Skip were the enthusiastic homebrewers and Tommy the brewmaster. But 15 years ago, the opposite was true. Early in 1996, Troy was a professional brewer who had just moved from Colorado to open a brew pub, Cervecerias La Cruda, the hangover brewery, in San Diego. Sure, La Cruda was a Mexican restaurant slash brew pub that was open in the gas lamp, owned by my brother, actually, and his partner. I actually was brewing beer at the Oasis in Boulder, Colorado. And uh, I got a call from my brother asking for a brewer. You know, he needed a brewer fast. And uh, I was young, single, and stupid, and drove out to California and uh, started brewing beer for him. As the brewery and restaurant came along, it soon became time to hire an assistant brewer, a job for which Troy had no lack of applicants. But one in particular caught his eye, an earnest young home brewer named Tommy Arthur. We put an ad in the paper for an assistant brewer, and Tommy answered the ad along with another 5,000 people. First of all, he showed up with a three-ring binder with every article and brewing recipe that he'd ever read or written himself, which I thought was very impressive. La Cruda was indeed my first professional gig. I think I was hired in March, late, late March, early April of 1996. Uh, when I was working uh, in, in Flagstaff in my last semester of college, I started putting together a binder of all kinds of beer stuff at the time. And the internet back in the mid-90s was not exactly the hot spot for, for brewing information than it is now, but at the same time, there was enough information out there. I collected it, put it in a binder, and I said, this is everything I've read about brewing. Uh, I know there's more to learn, but I can't quite find a whole lot more about brewing than this, so if you could you know, show me what's out there, Obi-Wan, I'd, I'd be really appreciative. He's, he's one of those guys that I could tell would absorb it and really was eager to learn and had that drive behind him. A lot of the other brewers, that, or potential brewers that showed up, I think for them it was more of a, a hobby or something that they wanted to dabble in. And I could tell with Tommy that he was serious about it. Uh, doors opened in May and uh, spent the first few months working on, on getting the brew house up and running. And I think we brewed our first batch at the end of May. The first couple months we were doing construction work and I quickly knew his work ethic was incredible. Um, and as you all probably know, brewing is hard labor. And that's usually why most people stop brewing, is they can't handle the, the work aspect of it. It's not just sitting around drinking beers all day. As the opening date for La Cruda approached, the brewer and his new assistant worked to put everything into place, the beer recipes, the brewing equipment. There was only one problem. The duo had yet to brew on the unfinished system, and it was beginning to look like they wouldn't have any beer for the opening. So the two approached the co-founder of another new brewery in town. They were ready to brew it, but their brewing system was not ready, so they came to me at Alesmith and asked if I would brew it for them. Uh, they had to go contract some of the beers at Alesmith, which is what uh, led to Skip's involvement with the beer, uh, because the, the brewery facility wasn't going, to be, uh, wasn't going to be able to produce beer in time for the opening. I uh, started as a home brewer and then uh, was at uh, Pacific Beach Brewhouse for three years, and then I co-founded Alesmith with Ted Newcomb back in 1995 and sold it to Peter Zion in 2002. The trio agreed to brew one of Troy's recipes, a classic robust porter they named Macanudo Porter. Macanudo Porter was uh, one of Troy's original recipes when the doors opened at Cerveceria's La Cruda. There were five house beers and Macanudo Porter was the darkest of the bunch. We needed a porter for our beer lineup and uh, Tommy and I were doing a lot of research on British porters and uh, formulated the beer based on really the British style beer and then we bumped it up a little bit to make it a robust porter. Uh, back in 1996 in San Diego, there were not a lot of adventurous beer drinkers, so uh, the original lineup of beers was not overly aggressive. There was a mild ale, a pale ale, a red ale, porter, and an ESB. And uh, by far and away, the most uh, distinctive beer of the bunch was the, the Macanudo Porter, and uh, it was also the, the worst-selling beer that we, that we made. So, you know, kind of goes hand-in-hand, hand, I suppose. 
Despite its poor release to the marketplace, the Macanudo Porter gained high recognition from the Great American Beer Festival, winning the second gold medal to ever be won by a San Diego brewery. This led to a revolution in craft brewing in San Diego, resulting in more than 100 gold medals for local breweries. The big, the big deal was was that even though the brewery was only in business for less than a year, it, it accomplished uh, the highest, you know, the highest level of achievement at the Great American Beer Festival uh, for the Macanudo Porter. We won a gold medal. So it's a special beer for us. Tommy and I won our first gold medal with that beer at the GABF. Uh, kind of got us going. No, I shortly, shortly after that, the brewery went down, went under, and I stopped brewing. Even though it became an award-winning beer, it could not save the Lacruda Brewery from closing. After the collapse of his brewery, Troy decided to return to Colorado, giving up professional brewing and finding a career in software engineering. A few years later, Skip sold his share of Alesmith and went into real estate finance. Tommy's passion for brewing led him to Pizza Fort in Solana Beach, a restaurant with its own small brewery. Here, Tommy soon had the freedom to experiment with his own beer recipes. Before long, Pizza Port became an award-winning brewery, gaining the coveted Brew Pub of the Year award twice, as well as expanding into a popular franchise. Tommy continued to expand port brewing by helping to create the Lost Abbey, again managing to win a shitload of medals. Today, a decade and a half after their initial success, the trio have again come together to brew Troy's recipe, the award-winning Macanudo Porter. 15 years ago was sort of the, the door shut at La Cruda and the beer hasn't been brewed since. I found the original brew logs, the exact recipe, and uh, we tried to keep, I mean, some of the grains that we used back then aren't in existence anymore, so we did do a couple substitutions, but 98% the exact same recipe, yes. Uh, I really had a fidelity and, and sort of and trust with Troy. We discussed that you know the recipes sort of lived in, in, in his mind and those were his beers and that I wouldn't I wouldn't really work within that framework to, to create those beers or try to recreate them. So it hasn't been brewed since then since uh, since we closed the doors in, in uh, early I guess it was March of 1997. Uh, we probably produced the last batch in January. Uh, so getting Skip and getting Troy back out here today to uh, get on the platform and put the beer back, back in uh, play 15 years later was, was really, really cool. 